Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at the information and communication component, the fourth component of the in internal control COSO framework. In the prior session, we looked at control environment, which is the attitude and the tone at, at the top when it comes to internal control by management, shareholders, and senior executives. We looked at risk assessment. How does the company assess their own risk? Three, we looked at control activities. What are the control activities that the company undertake to make sure their internal control and their company is running smoothly? In this session, we would look at the information and communication. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Information system in the context of internal control system, information can range from operational, financial data, internal, as well as external. That is necessary to help us run the company on a day-to-day -day basis. Now bear in mind, we need information system to run the company. We also need an information system to be able to communicate with our supplier, with our vendors, with our customers. Quality information system produce timely, current, accurate, and accessible information. So if we're relying on some sort of an information system, it has to give us information that's relevant to our purpose, help us run the company on a day-to-day -day basis. Now for the purpose of auditors, we are most interested in the accounting information system or the AIS. And the AIS should be established to appropriate, appropriately initiate, document, process, and disclose an entity's transaction. What, what do we mean by this? Well, think about a purchase order. We start a purchase order with proper authorization. So no purchase order can be processed without being authorized by someone. Remember, authorization is one of the control activities. Step two. We cannot purchase from a, for any vendor. We have to purchase only from pre-approved vendors. Simply put, pre-approved vendors means vendors that already been reviewed and they are accepted for us as a company by top management. In other words, the purchase order cannot select their relatives, their friend, their spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend to buy from them. Then we process the order through the accounting information system. Then we issue a report then we make the payment, then we disclose information about the payment system. Well, this is all part of a proper accounting and information system. Now, the company could have many information systems other than accounting, but they should always serve the day-to-day -day operation of the business, including internal customers as well as external customers. Now, to speak a little bit more about accounting information system, that could be that could have numerous element numerous component including categories like sales we could have an accounting information system a module for sales sales returns cash receipt acquisition inventory so on and so forth for each type of transaction the accounting information system is required to satisfy all of the relevant assertions that we talked about associated with these transaction should so the accounting information system should serve to ver not verify to support these assertions. For example, the system should identify and accurately document all valid transactions, ensuring that all shipments are correctly recorded. And this emphasizes completeness and accuracy. So the system, we should have internal control within the system to make sure that we are recording all shipment and it's being recorded properly. The fi for financial reporting purposes, the system should present transaction in the appropriate period. Well, this is basically applying the cutoff principle or making sure we're complying with the cutoff assertion. It should also generate reports that accurately reflect current impact of, trans of, of the transaction in terms of classification. What, what is it impacting? Is it impacting the income statement, the balance sheet, so on and so forth? Also, the accounting information system should be able to recognize instances when encounter risks exceeds the company's risk tolerance. For example, 
we should not be selling to customer who are 90 days past due on payments. The system should be able to detect this and not allow the sale transaction to go through. So this is what we mean by information. Again, accounting information system or just simply put information system in general. I used accounting information because as auditor, as accountant, we are mostly concerned with that. When it comes to communication, communication is a continual iterative process of providing, sharing, and obtaining necessary information. Communication means let the people know, let the users know, let the stakeholders know anything you want them to know about the company, the product. It involves both downward and upward communication. Downward means what? Communication coming from top management down to lower management, down to employees, and the management should flow upward if employees, lower management, mid-level management want to want to share information that information could be going in both ways as well as horizontally between department ensuring that information is distributed throughout the organization including communication with external parties like customers suppliers and regulators you also have the responsibility of to communicate any relevant information not only internally but with outside party and you should have a means to do so whether it's a phone uh, email website, newspaper, social media, whatever that means are. Effective communication should ensure that all employees understand their roles as well, their responsibilities, and how their individual activity relate to each other. So if you work for a company and you don't know exactly what's going on, that is an issue. They should also receive a clear message from senior management employees that the internal control responsibility must be taken seriously. And that's very important to communicate that internal control is an important component of the company policy. Let's take a look at an example just to kind of show you how what do we mean by communication. Assume an, a new policy for a manufacturing company state that all production line issue issues must be reported immediately to management to prevent potential losses or delay. So that's this is a new policy. It has to be implemented immediately. It's going to flow downward. The new policy is communicated to all relevant employees through several channels. This might include company-wide meetings, emails, a post on the company's internal website, we could provide training for those directly affected. In this communication, management should clearly explain the reasoning behind this policy. Why are we implementing this policy? What exactly is required from the employee and the potential consequences of not following the policy? So this is downward clear communication. We should also have upward communication. The company should set up dedicated hotlines and online form where employees can report any production line issues. This is a form of upward communication where the employee is communicating those frontline people communicating issues to mid and upper level management. They should also encourage feedback about the new policy. Let us know what you think. You think it's a good policy, not a good policy. What can we improve? Any potential problem that might arise from its implementation. And this allow employees on the production line to communicate quickly. You have to have a communication line for them and effectively with management. Now, also communication could take many forms. For example, if there's a fraud, a theft, misappropriation going on, there should be a hotline or an 800 number where employees can call and report anything that's unusual or anything that's illegal or unethical that is going on. That's also part of the open communication. So in this session, we covered the fourth component of information and communication. What's left is the monitoring step. The monitoring step, we kind of touch upon it briefly in control activities. We have to monitor the performance of all the activities, but here it has its own component, monitoring activity. And that's going to be the fifth component. And by doing so, we would complete the internal control component, which is a very important concept, internal control COSO framework, whether you are a CPA exam candidate, an accounting student, what you should do now, go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional resources, MCQs, true false, that's going to help you understand this topic. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.